Hey everybody, a um, couple people, a bunch of people asked us to uh, put together a little video showing how we built this remote controlled wagon. So uh, my son here and I are going to go through some of the details. Um, I guess it's in a couple of the other videos, but just to, I guess, rehash some of the other things I've said. It started off as a Razor 4x4, I'm sorry, Razor 4-wheeler um, that I, we had bought my son a bunch of years ago when he turned four or five, I guess, um, when he was too big for the four-wheeler and we moved up into uh, gas-powered dirt bikes, I decided that I would take the, um, the Razor and instead of selling it, to chop it up. So um, basically what I did, you can see the main frame is still pretty much intact. Um, this right here is where the foot pegs used to be here and on the other side over here. Um, what we did is I just literally cut them off and I welded them on to the top frame right up there. That's this piece here. And um, it kind of just widened the stance uh, so I could attach this wooden this wooden frame member there. Um, and that's really the only main changes that I did to the Razor four-wheeler and it gave me a nice flat deck to bolt the um, or flat surface to bolt the deck onto. Um, the only other things I did is for the front brace up top here, I had to, um, the, you can see here, there's a brace that goes all the way up and connects to the top tube. I had to bend that and re-weld it because it used to go up higher to where the, um, the steering bar used to go. So I just cut that off. And on this side, I had to triangulate it a little differently um, to attach a little lower because it, where it was originally, you can actually see the hole back down there. Um, it would have interfered with the steering um, servo, linear actuator, I guess, servo that, uh, that I had bought. So that's the basic modifications I did to the Razor four-wheeler itself. Um, you can see there's a couple of places where I had to weld on little supports to make up for, for what I cut off to make everything fit. But it wasn't anything real hard. I think I remember it taking me just a couple hours um, out here with a grinder and a welder. Um, so I guess I'll move into the, the rest of the pieces for the, um, for the machine itself. So once I got the, the basic mechanical, physical stuff done to the frame and had a spot to put the deck, um, I made the deck out of just half-inch plywood and some one-by-sixes that I cut down. So that's all this is here. Um, and then as far as the electronics, I'll go through that real quick. So um, there are two main systems on there. There are, I guess, just backing up, there are two batteries, two 12-volt batteries that came with the Razor four-wheeler. Um, I took off one of the side cases um, on the left-hand side. That one's taken off. On the right-hand side, it's still on. But all they are is a little fake engine cover that you can see when you're riding the four-wheeler. Um, so those just go in there and cover up the batteries. So it'd be really easy to put larger batteries that have um, a higher milliamp hour rating that would mean longer run time. Um, so once I had that in, I ran wires for the 20 volt system up to that battery disconnect switch there with the red handle. And then I also ran a 12 volt circuit up to that red handle disconnect switch. Um, the 12 volt system is for running the linear actuator in the back there. And the 24 volt system is for running the main, the main uh, motor right there. So I come from the batteries to the two disconnect switches and then from the disconnect switches I come back to, um, that's a speed controller, uh, specifically that model speed controller. It's a pretty good one that I've used on a couple other projects. So if you see how good my camera does, it's called a Sabertooth. It's a 2 by 60 amp speed controller and it also has a control voltage port on the left hand side. So you see specifically on the right hand side, it has the black and red wire coming from the battery disconnect, the 24 volt battery disconnect, the yellow and blue wire go out to the motor as a PWM or a pulse width modulation signal out of the speed controller. That's what 
gives the motors its variable speed and all that. On the left side, that is both a output from the board for control power for the five volt source that the receiver needs, as well as the control signal to the speed controller that tells the speed controller how fast you want the motor to be turning from your uh, from your remote control. Then, so the let's see the white, red, and black cables coming out of the receiver. They're called um, PWM cables, and that's just for um, they're common with all the remote control cars, things like that. And it just provides a power, a ground, and a PWM signal. So coming out of that receiver is one PWM cable and signal to the controller and one PWM signal for the uh, Servo City steering gear. And there's, the, there's where it comes in and the, um, the, both the power and the signal wire comes in right there. And you can kind of see as I come up here how it's just simply connected to an arm that goes in and out and turns everything. So the battery's a little low. I haven't actually run this thing in years. Um, so I just pulled it out, cleaned it off a little bit, and hooked up the battery charger. So I will really quick try and um, turn on the power if I can find the controller. There's a controller. Sorry for the jumpy video. So what we gotta do, I'm gonna hand this to my son. Hold that for me, buddy. And I'm going to turn on the two switches. And then my son's going to hand back the controller to me. I'm going to try and do this one-handed. So on the transmitter, actually, Logan, why don't you hold this? Slowly turn, get into the view over here, right there. So slowly turn the steering wheel back and forth on the transmitter. The other way. Show, show them the transmitter. You have to show them the control of the transmitter. There you go. So turn it back and forth. Other way. Okay. So let go. Okay. Now I think we should be... I'm going to tilt it back a little bit. So go ahead and go forwards and reverse slowly. Go the other way. Now go the other way. Okay, let go. All right, so now it's sitting back on there. So um, typically when we've used it in the past, those two batteries would last um, a couple hours of constant running. We would load up with coolers and beach chairs and head up to our local park um, for concerts and things like that. You could, like I said, you could easily put bigger batteries that would give you even more run time or let you carry heavier loads longer. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Um, here's just some web printouts from stuff I bought back when. So you, here in this picture you can see the, um, one of the switches, the surface radio, which is the transmitter. And I think that even comes with a receiver when you buy the pack for like a hundred bucks. Um, the model that we're using is just the DX3C. It's a pretty nice um, standard remote control. Um, on the center sheet, you can see those are just the battery disconnects that I used. Well, it's a handle for a battery disconnect. I guess I did print out the wrong one. Um, but the plug-in for a couple batteries, oh, there's, the, there's the handles for the disconnects. You can use almost anything, but that's a, um, a high current rating, so I didn't have to worry about um, the switch burning up from the current through the motors. Or, and, and it was also easy to disconnect and, and keep track of everything. They sell the handles. I think I broke one of the handles, and that's what that was, me buying an extra handle for it. Um, so I'll put a bunch of links for the controller, the receiver, the, um, the servo and stuff in the comments. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, like I said, we haven't used this in a couple years. So we'll be trying to uh, sell it soon. If you guys, if anyone has any interest, um, we'll go from there. Thanks everyone for your for for watching. See you.